So the name of the class is Physics for Poets. The main reason that I chose to teach is that people are generally curious. You ever look at a little baby, little kid, do they look bored to you? They're like this. Hmm, interesting. Well, somehow at some point in their life, they lose this spontaneous way of being in the world and they start becoming prisoners to constructs of the world. Colleges have become trade schools. They teach you how to get a job. They don't teach you how to think critically. They don't teach you how to wonder. And they don't expose you to the most profound ideas that human beings have managed to come up with. At the speed of light, one second of time, if I was a photon, is the entire history of the universe. Light doesn't experience time. If you were to travel at the speed of light, you would be everywhere in the universe at the same time. You can't go any faster than being everywhere at once. And there's a lot of forces out there trying to control people through misinformation. There's also sort of this war going on, right, between rationality and irrationality. Anti-scientific sentiment and a lot of the, sort of the religious right, all of that sort of stuff. But there are people who want to go back to some medieval view of the universe. Ignorance isn't just inconvenient. It's dangerous. If people don't understand what you mean by a greenhouse gas or what the data is that supports it, how they can possibly vote about what to do about it. You as human beings see an extraordinarily narrow slice of reality. Right now I'm not sensing infrared radiation or magnetic fields, although a great white shark can. This is an electron gun. I can accelerate these electrons. Interacting with argon atoms, producing a blue light, characteristic of that gas. So now I can control the invisible. If I put these electrons through a magnetic field, it causes them to curve. And what I've just created is akin to the aurora borealis at the north and south poles of the Earth. Unless you find a way to extend your senses into these realms that are normally unseen, the conclusion you come to about the fundamental nature of reality is wrong. Most of the classic civilizations that collapsed were because of a misunderstanding of nature. Example, Easter Island. They thought it was more important to build big stone effigies to a bunch of, you know, people who lied to them that everything would be fine instead of building canoes so they could go fishing. It went from this sort of agrarian, relatively peaceful society into a society where people were warring with each other and eating each other. They bought into a worldview that simply wasn't so. And it led to their demise. And we're doing that now. Because we have these very powerful prejudices and predispositions about the way we want the world to be. The way we want the world to be isn't the way it is. At first it seemed kind of unconventional the way he taught physics because I had a different class that previous semester and it was more, you know, working out problems and equations and Eric teaches it from a more um, universal standpoint, more philosophical, um, that allows you to see the relationship between physics and the big picture. The evolution of your thoughts, which are ideas, are governed by the laws of physics and in particular of quantum mechanics. How would it change your worldview if you knew that there were other universes playing out with every possibility imaginable? This is what electrons in fact do. I'm essentially using the fact that electrons live out multiple histories to do computations in parallel universes. We have quantum computers now that do these things in all these parallel histories. Exactly where do you think those histories are playing out? Are these other places physically distinct universes where there are other versions of yourselves? Would you like to know what the NSA is doing with this? The NSA is building quantum teleporters because they can teleport information this way, get information from one location to another without it ever being in between. And that way, no one can eavesdrop. Niels Bohr, who was also a co-founder of quantum mechanics, said, if you are not shocked profoundly by quantum mechanics, you have not understood it. We live for the adventure. We live for the experience, this, this sense of exploration. When we lose that ex sense of exploration, when we lose a sense of wonder, is when we begin to die. These are the kind of things that modern physics is addressing. The deepest, most mysterious, most fundamental questions about the nature of nature, the nature of existence itself.